All right. So here's section uh, 7.2. We're looking at the solutions to the band and periodic potential problem. And we'll look at band gaps and compare the solutions to the, the finite system we had calculated before. All right. So here's the solution that we had uh, come up with in the previous section. As I said, it looks pretty horrendous. Um, again, it's as a function of this uh, unitless parameter psi. And uh, again, you can pursue a uh, solution that is um, graphical. And let's look at the right-hand side. It's uh, a cosine KL. Uh, that's a periodic function that varies between uh, minus 1 and 1. And um, for any given K, and K is now discrete as shown here, where it takes on uh, capital N values, and they range from minus n over 2 to n, n over 2. And they're discrete in their spacing. So you basically will have lines here for different k's. Okay? So for a different k, you're exploring a certain uh, uh, value range that reaches between uh, minus 1 and 1. All right, so the right-hand side is a set of n flat lines between minus 1 and 1. All right, if we plot this uh, function uh, on the left-hand side in blue, that is an oscillatory function that has some damping in it, and we would want to find the uh, intersections of the blue line with the red line given a certain value of k. And what that means is um, you will only find solutions that are in within these ranges here. Okay, like this. So, that starts to resemble something we had seen before. We'll turn this around, same figure, and we notice that uh, for a given set of solutions, like this, you find allowed areas where electrons are allowed to occur. And we can do this for different uh, points of k. So if we pick k equals 0, we'll look at these points here. That would be, uh, sorry, k equals 0 maps to this. And as k uh, ramps uh, up and down, you, you find solutions in this energy range. So let's pick another k, ramp k down. The cosine goes down. We find another set of points here. And you can ultimately see how we have different values of allowed st states emerging. So, similar as I sketched here, basically you translate uh, these bands into a dispersion. All right. So here is this dispersion again. You have allowed states as a function of k. Okay. So here you have energy and k. All right, these states are separated by a small k, delta k, 2 pi over nl, where again n is reasonably arbitrarily defined to be a large number. So this could be any large number that is the size of the ring, this Gedanken experiment ring that you considered. So the interesting aspect here is that the number of states per band is the difference between k max and k min. So from here, to here, and that's minus pi over L and pi over L. So in total, it's 2 pi over L over the delta K, which is 2 pi over NL. So the number of states per band is N. Okay. So the number of discrete points that you consider in this band is capital N, which is this fictitious number of number of repeated cells. So you can make this any which number you want, assume that it's large, and you come from a uh, few discrete points to many discrete points to a quasi-infinite number of discrete points. All right. So in this case here, we have four states per atom. We have n atoms. Um, we have four bands or n state in each band. So this is, in a sense, quite similar to what we have calculated before via transmission coefficients. 
And if you tune the parameters right, say you consider gallium arsenide effective masses in uh, the um, PCPBT tool, um, and you can calculate this with a transmission matrix, or you can do it in the tool also with a tight binding numerical approach, or you can do this uh, with a periodic potential lab, you get dispersions that are essentially laying on top of each other. So the, the concepts are very uh, seemingly differently, different, but the final result is the same, that you're forming bands. Inside of the bands here, electrons are allowed, and they can propagate throughout the crystal, and across these bands, electrons are not allowed, and there's no transmission or there's no presence of electrons, and this is what we would call a gap. Now, if we do this uh, with a slightly different structure with 80 barriers, all you do is you fill in more dots onto this uh, quasi-continuous line, and if you do indium arsenide, it's a lighter effective mass, the bands are slightly different in their um, shape. Uh, indium arsenide is a lighter effective mass, so the bands are sp spanning broader, but the, the essential result remains the same. So the key summary here is that a finite super lattice with a large number of repeated cells approaches that of a periodic potential. Effectively, they describe the same physics. What we're after is representing a system that is much too large, uh, 10 to the 23 particles, we try to represent that with approximate methods. The periodic potential is one way to consider an infinite uh, cell by a periodic condition. You still have to introduce an artificial uh, number, cap capital N, for the number of cells that you consider, but it's arbitrary. Or you can do it numerically through shooting electrons through a finite number of barriers, but the, the finite number you can crank up to be pretty large as well. Now, in the next segment, we're going to start looking at some of the properties of these bands. We'll look at wave packets and the effective mass and electrons and holes.